Welcome back again. My name is Christina Vasquez. If you don't know who I am, I like to make wine recipes. And today's recipe is actually gonna be peach tea wine. One of the reasons why I wanted to do the peach tea wine is because I was really inspired about a new recipe that had came out by Sutter Home. Um, they have a peach tea wine of their own that they wanna make. And I'll present the picture of what it looks like here. And I was really inspired to make something similar. I had asked you guys to put a comment down below which recipe you would like to see next because it was between three, which was the peach tea, the hibiscus, and a lemon lime wine, and the peach one. We can all say, hello, Ken, thank you. Thank you for commenting and participating. And this is why we are making this recipe today because you decided to comment first. And I really, really appreciate the participation. Thank you so much. So Ken, here's your shout out. Yay, Ken! I'm gonna go ahead and get started and I hope you guys love the recipe. I have all these peaches here and this is 14 pounds of thawed out peaches and because they were thawed out they had some juices come out of them. Take all the peach juice that came out of the peaches that were thawed. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in this pot here. I'm gonna actually use this peach juice um, to boil and we're going to be adding some tea bags to it. Tea bags I have here are family sized bags and there's 24 in here, but because they're family sized, I'm only gonna add 16 of these tea bags. And so in comparison, just in case you needed to know, this is a regular size tea bag and this is a family size. So you can kind of see the difference. Um, so we're gonna put 16 in here to boil with that, that peach juice. Because there's not like uh, substantially a lot of peach juice, I'm gonna add a little bit of water with this while it boils. While that's steeping and boiling, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to add some dry ingredients. One tablespoon and one teaspoon of acid blend. For the yeast energizer, which is yeast nutrient, I'm going to add one tablespoon. Next thing is we're going to need four crushed Camden, Campton tablets. Just add sugar. And for this recipe, I'm actually going to be putting in 10 pounds of sugar. Add some water because now we're going to need to stir all this stuff up. I did not add all 10 pounds of sugar yet. I just want to have everything mixed as well as possible. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. I would recommend that you guys get one of these long stick spatulas or the long stick spoons because they really do come in handy when it comes to mixing things up. All right, so I'm just gonna keep adding more sugar. Woo. Splashing sugar water everywhere on myself. Okay, that is 10 pounds, people. 10 pounds of sugar. Add some more water. Back to stirring. Add the rest of the other half gallon. So I've let these tea bags steep for about 20 minutes now. So it's time to go ahead and take them out and transfer them over to the glass bowl. Because we don't need them no more. We don't need you no more. Now what's gonna happen after I take all these tea bags out? Uh, it's probably best to let this 
sit for a couple minutes and cool down. I know it's really hard and you, and it's, you know, you feel anxious because you just want to do everything really quickly. Uh, but this is one of those processes where we need to let this cool. We'll be transferring over you in three, two, one. Boom! It's not hot anymore, just the way we need. Um, it's a very dark color because we did use so many tea bags, but now it's time to transfer it over. Here's my mixture as well. I have that whole 10 pounds and one and a half gallons mixed up in here. I'm gonna go ahead and add the tea. And mixed everything together like we always do. And add some more water here. Ooh, it's splashing. That's better. I think I got overexcited there for a minute. Do another quick stir. Definitely looks like sweet tea, huh? Here comes the brew bag. You can kind of see. This is how much we have We here. need to go ahead and add one more gallon of water. I appreciate everyone who decides that they want to join my channel. I want to give a big shout out to Homebrew Ohio. Thank you so much for considering and becoming a sponsor. But this channel is growing so fast. I'm just, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to have all these wonderful wine enthusiasts that want to make homemade country wines. I'm going to use this Lipton cold brew, the family size bag. I'm only going to put one in here. The cold brew basically means no boiling required. I really wanted to have that tea flavor along with the peach. So I'm going to drop it in here along with my peaches. But for now, that's what it is. So it's it's in there. And I'm gonna tie this drawstring up. And just dunk her in all the way. It's so beautiful. Oh my gosh, I love the color. I love the color. Tomorrow is when we're going to add our peptic enzyme and yeast. You always have to wait at least 24 hours before you add it in. So I'll see you tomorrow. It's been 24 hours that this has been sitting. I'm going to use a specific gravity check with my wine thief here. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in for you. You literally just drop it in there and it'll pull out a sample of the wine for you. And I'm going to drop my hydrometer in there. The potential alcohol for this right now is only around 9%. Um, I do want it a little bit higher than that, so I'm a little bit uh, not satisfied. I need to add just a little bit more sugar than just 10 pounds. I want to look for about 14% uh, potential alcohol in this certain type of wine and boost, boost up the sugar. I think I'm going to just add half of it, five more pounds of sugar. Stir up the sugar real quick get everything combined. Because this is a five gallon bucket, it's pretty much deep enough that I'm just gonna go ahead and just drop this my hydrometer, or what I like to call as a West Virginia slang, bobber, is showing us. If I get it off my finger, my fingers are all sticky now. You guys see the 15% here? So I'm gonna let my hydrometer slash bobber go, because I like to call it a bobber. And we're reading about 15%. So adding that extra five, five pounds of sugar uh, brought it up to about 15% alcohol potentially, um, which makes me very, very happy. And now I can take my spoon out of here and I can put the brew bag back inside. She's back in there looking beautiful. Hey baby, how you doing? Let's add our peptic enzyme next. We are going to need one and a half tablespoons of peptic enzyme. Dumping it in the bucket. Boo, 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 boo. Done. And I'm just gonna mix that peptic enzyme around just a little bit. 
make her happy. So you guys already know, this is my favorite yeast. This is the Lalvin EC118. The reason why I like this is it's a champagne yeast and it always gives you the highest percentage alcohol that you can really get um, is when you use like a, a champagne yeast like this. So it's gonna give you the most potential alcohol volume. And I'm just gonna go ahead, open it up and use the whole pack. I like to show you guys my yeasty beastie. So here's my friends that it's gonna make our alcohol. And I'm gonna go ahead and start sprinkling them in. I put my inhabited live friends in there and I just like to kind of get them wet let them feel the sugar a little bit uh, try to push that brew bag down just a little bit more just so our yeasty friends have a chance of survival and that's it everybody Let's close this up we'll put our lovely airlock in here and we'll just let it ferment it's gonna rapidly start bubbling. It'll probably take two to three weeks that you'll see just poof, 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 all these bubbles come out of it. And that is a great thing. That means that it's fermenting and doing what it's supposed to do. And when it stops rapidly bubbling like that all the time, that's when you need to put it over into secondary fermentation. And of course, as you all know, I will be filming that for you next. The next video of the peach tea will be us um, racking it into a carboy and also tasting the flavor. So let's see how it came out. I have two more shout outs I wanna give to you guys. Fred, thank you so much, as well as commenting in the last video that you would like to see the hibiscus wine. You said you have a lot of hibiscus plants around your house, so that's pretty cool. And another special person I just wanna say you're awesome is Tiffany. Tiffany, you know who you are. Um, you follow me on Instagram and you've showed me some um, really nice uh, stuff that you've made and have been experimenting with wine as well and the things that you said were some of the nicest most inspirational thing and literally some of the nicest things I've ever seen somebody say in a positive manner and you really melted my heart um, and you made me even more inspired to keep going. So thank you so much, Tiffany, you're awesome. And that is it, everybody. I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your day. You like the recipe and as always, happy brewing fermenting.